So this is one of my kind of favorite quotes that speaks to the phenomena of addiction by Charles Baudelaire, who is probably one of the more famous poets in French history. Uh, he who has recourse to poison in order to think will soon be unable to think without poison. So. On page uh, 178 uh, of Pharmacodynamis, uh, I think is one of the uh, greatest pieces of poetry, po prose, poetry, that uh, has ever been written on addiction. Uh, and I'm going to read most of it to you right now. How many of you have read that chapter? Pretty interesting, huh? <laughs> okay. Okay. A peculiar clean taste, slightly chemical, but not unpleasant. Once you taste it, you'll never forget. Nothing else quite like it. Trouble notes, trace of metallic, trace of bitter, tongue numb. Maybe it's what sweet would be like without sugar. Anybody know what drug he's talking about? Yeah, he's talking about smokable cocaine, or crack cocaine, or smokable cocaine, free base cocaine. Seems like a convenient mode of ingestion for small quantities. Keep wanting to get back to where things were clear. So good that if you use it once, you're hooked. That was once said in a book by some uh, substance abuse treatment professionals. Talk about good advertising. Did the drug cartels pay for that line? The free amine base is simply prepared by basifying. The rule of thumb that alkaloid salts are water soluble and the base is oil soluble holds well for cocaine. A few drops of ammonia in an aqueous solution of the salt precipitates the base. Extract the base with petroleum ether, not diethyl ether or naphtha. Add a layer of solvent, cap the container and shake. When the solution turns clear, the precipitated base has dissolved in the solvent layer. Draw off the solvent layer with a pipette, like an eyedropper, and squeeze into a wide flat bottom dish to evaporate off the solvent. The crystals are quite beautiful. This much is well documented. The first flash is the best. Never quite that good after. The fleeting quality of the hit, how an interruption, a word, a request from someone else, the telephone ringing, your spouse wondering about the shopping, any outside engagement can dispel the brief enchantment. So you try to avoid the interactions. You go again, but as the metabolic half-life of the coke far outlasts the duration of the rush, the stimulant continues to build up in your system. So you need a downer, something to take the edge off, some way to get leveled. We're talking poisons here, but poison's going nowhere. But you do it some more. We can call it an experiment. Finally, you do it even when you don't like what it does to you. You get too much edge. You get too many jangles, jaggies. So maybe you take something to take the edge off, speedballing. Except maybe you take slightly more than you needed because you wanted to feel it, and now you were drowsy. So you took some more crack or base. That puts you far. That puts you too far on the stimulated side. So you try the cycle again. Eventually, you get leveled. Brain won't work. Too jumpy to read. Too bored to do nothing. Toke. Plenty late. Plenty late enough to go to bed. Just one more hit. Just one more lift. Maybe a small one this time. Small one didn't do it. Siren. You hide your pain in the blinding whiteness of your crystals. You hide the night. Already I can feel it. Tasks undone, papers left scattered, a slow accumulation of flotsam, or a word too sharply spoken. A craving calls me through any job or meeting, during an evening with friends, from my bed where I went, thinking to sleep. So quickly she makes her bed in your ear. But she is not a singer. She bringeth not the lyre, but the lie. You love it. You want to do it again, and morning comes again, and ever so closer, and ever, and I still haven't slept. 
uh, you are stealing from tomorrow. And it turns out that stealing from tomorrow is just the first stage. Stealing from tomorrow is like going into debt, spending tomorrow today, or tonight, actually. So you've wrecked tomorrow, stolen all of its energy, stolen its waking hours, stolen its goodwill. Tomorrow you will be behind all day, if you get up at all. After stealing from tomorrow for long enough, weeks, maybe months, you start stealing from today. Stealing from today means that the ally is not giving you power or aid or assistance. Rather, the ally takes today for her own service. Ingestion, filling the bowl, the preparation, the scoring, and just time taking the hits. A little bit of time to space, to flash or level. That's about it for today. Just the worship service. Weren't you supposed to get something from all this? But you're not at the end. Next is stealing from yesterday, the third stage of the Allies conquest. Your savings, your bank accounts, nothing very esoteric there. Sometimes your friends, sometimes your marriage, sometimes your children, your reputation and your memories, nothing very esoteric there, the hard part. You do it instead of eating, you do it instead of sleeping, <clears throat> you do it instead of doing. The hard part is stopping sitting down. The hard, part, the hard part concerns time. The hard part is just sitting without inspiration, with no ideas and not knowing. No, that's not it. Lots of ideas. The hard part is doing it. And there is so much to do, much more than you have time to do. It's easier to keep the accelerator pressed and to keep rushing, touching this, touching that, and to keep doing that. The hard part is quitting, clear enough. 